Hello, welcome to this watch's live stream. I'm Clint, <laughs> this is Diana. We are professional illustrators and the instructors at Swatches Academy. All right, we are going to be looking over the submitted art from the viewers. Uh, and if you are interested in getting your work submitted, and I think there probably are because we've had hundreds of views on these videos, but not everyone has submitted. Uh, you can just go to the Swatches Discord. That's literally just SwatchesDiscord.com. And you can join the uh, the Discord. And you can post your work in the video critique submission. You can post a, a single image if you're just working on a particular piece that you want some feedback on. Or you can put the full portfolio. Just put a link out there to your portfolio. I'm going to start with Igor. Now, Igor's comment was, I'd like to ask uh, if you could review my portfolio or maybe just a few latest art pieces, art station. Here's the link. Is freelance artist. Let us know if you're uh, watching, Igor. Yeah. Now, if you're new here, the way that we generally like to review the portfolios is first just kind of glancing at them as a whole on the page and get a general feel for it in the way that kind of the overall presentation mm -hmm. of no, the images comes across yeah, yeah. Uh, then we can start talking about what is working maybe what's not working and suggestions for basically improvement of the work depending on the target you're going for so offhand I, i'm definitely seeing some good skills the piece that stands out to me the most is this one immediately registers as having the uh, the highest show of skill in it, like the most professional. And some of these older ones, I definitely suggest just turning off. Uh, they were probably fine to do as studies and everybody has old work, but I don't think these are necessarily good reflections of your current skill level and necessarily what the client expectation should be of what you can deliver to mm -hmm. them. So for that reason, I would recommend turning off Avatar and probably through the end, possibly with the exception of the little goblin, just because you've got some like good posing and kind of action going on. So it's kind of a fun character. The border is... The border is a little amateur. Uh, you don't really see pros doing graphic mock-ups around their work. It's a small thing, but yeah. it would look cleaner without it. No. Just just the sketch on his own is good yeah, enough. Yeah, but it's a solid sketch. Yeah. Yeah. I like that he has a broken lance. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. And he has a bucket on his head. That's always good. <laughs> Okay, the other ones. Uh, what was your, before we start talking about individual pieces, overall reads here, what are you getting? Um, well, it definitely has a sort of um, more edgy 40K kind of mm -hmm. leaning to it. Um, so it looks like that's kind of your aesthetic. Um, so that's good. That's a good aesthetic to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is actually one where... I feel like he is honing in on a clear subject matter. And that's one of the problems that we usually see mm -hmm. of people trying to do too many varied things. Yeah, he doesn't have, you don't have that problem either. Yeah. You have a good like focus for the most part, especially in the more recent. Work. Yeah, these top two. Um, they seem more focused in that direction. And that's a good direction. There's a lot of cool interesting designs you can make for that sort of stuff for that genre okay now going through the pieces uh we're not going to do critiques on every piece but we want to pull out certain points that stand out to us so this as just a scene to do is complex a lot of action a lot of visual components uh it's difficult to pull off a big scene like this regardless of the fact that it's the the mix between Roman and cyberpunk somehow um, 
don't feel like that design is necessarily landing. I mean, I get the idea there. I don't think it was Igor's no, choice. I don't it's a commission. Think, so. Right. Uh, so it, it's a hard one to make work. Uh, just looking at the rendering side of it, we're getting really washed out in a lot of stuff. And that isn't to do with the design. That's just the rendering side of it. So I would suggest making sure that you have plenty of good references. I pulled off a couple. So anytime you're approaching a scene that has like dramatic sunny light like this, that's tricky to do because you have to have a high amount of contrast. So make sure that you have guide images that capture the kind of lighting and, and the feel that you want from that. Uh, this is a classic image. Wouldn't be surprised if you weren't looking at this actual image, maybe as one of your resources, uh, because it's a very similar layout here. But you can see here, like, what we need is the distinction between the value of the sky and the building itself. And this is a common problem that people run into, and we see it a lot, which is people think, okay, well, the light is coming from the sky, Therefore, the sky must be very bright. It's like, no, no, the sun is very bright. The sky is darker. The sky has a base value of blue, mm -hmm. essentially, during the daytime, which is lower than the white buildings. So it's fine to have the buildings being much brighter than the blue sky behind them. And that's just going to infuse a lot more color into that piece. Uh, other things to look at is like, here, I think something like this could have really worked. You have a lot of color, you have a lot more dust and smoke and stuff in the air. Maybe it would keep you from having to try to do so much detail in the background. Or this one's, you know, another good sign, uh, sunny scene, action coming towards the camera, that sort of feel. But just having a couple of these on hand might help keep that, you know, a little better. Okay. Here, any thoughts on this one? So overall, like the design, clearly I see that, yeah, it's it's Warhammer 40K. See the, the big oversized armor, um, which is cool. I like all that stuff. I like the aesthetics. They look good. There's some kind of little things that are odd about it. I think there's there's two things that jump out to me which is the choice of values um, where you have... It's good that you separated, first of yeah. all, the foreground from the background. That's nice. It's clearly separated. Okay, you're not letting all the values bleed in over everywhere. But some of these guys are just merging way too much into the background. They're being pushed too far back. And so we're losing depth. It's mm -hmm. just flattening out. So some of them should be a little bit darker than they are right now, some of these things, so that it can come forward a little bit. Then we have, because of that, we have areas like this in the foreground, right? These pieces that he's got here, a fabric mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. And it's creating this weird read where it looks like negative space, right? It looks yeah. like the background. And so the arm looks thin. I know it's not, and I can rationalize reason. But it, it takes a moment just to... But there's no need for that kind of... Yeah that you know break in um the read so that's something i would think about is just moving those values away from white especially i know you tried to do it here right you had yeah. it really white and then you're like oh it's gonna merge into the background i would just try not making it that white yeah just tone it down make it dirtier or something so that that doesn't it's happen. not reading as a negative space mm -hmm. yeah uh on these I would say that this is a largely successful image. Mm -hmm. uh, I particularly like the way that you simplified this craft back here. Yeah, it's, it's not blurry. It's, yeah. it's nicely defined. Yeah. Uh, it's some smaller things. Like it, it takes me a moment to determine whether perspective is making that hand look smaller or whether he has missed sized gloves 
or gauntlets on each hand. Like, like this one has an oversized. Yeah, it's not clear if that one's small because it's in perspective, and it's really the same size as that one, or if it's actually small. Yeah. And that's kind of problematic is that people would assume everything else on the character is symmetrical. Therefore, it feels like the hands also should be symmetrical, but that hand looks way too small. It's that sort of thing that causes a little issue that doesn't necessarily... Yeah, you know, it, it might well, be part of the commission, though. It's I don't not know. necessarily a mistake, right? It just yeah. It's things like that that cause weirdness in the read at the first first read when a person first looks at it where they don't know if it's a mistake or not yeah yeah okay and i've got that there oh well, this one this one has a pretty good read to it uh the combination of the mermaid tales with the undead valkyrie that was really skillfully done. It was... It was good. It's not a combination I've seen before, but I... Design-wise, I feel like it is bordering on too many things. I don't know. It's, it's undead and a mermaid and a Valkyrie. And the, the shape there on the chin is... It's reading a bit beard. Yeah, it's a bit beard. So, getting the female form out of it, but the face doesn't feel female. The face feels much more masculine. Mm, that's true. So, I would suggest maybe revising some of the face to try to get more of that. I mean, you can still do a clearly feminine... I think just removing that beard would help yeah. a lot. You don't need to do too much. But I think you did, this, this piece is a really yeah. good piece, okay? Like, yeah. I like it. I don't mind the mermaid tail. I think it, it it's well integrated and it's a cool turn that it has. You mm -hmm. painted it well. I, I like this piece a lot. I think it's your strongest piece. Yeah, we looked at some of these earlier and our opinion is this is clearly the highest level piece. And whatever process you went through to create this one, you should just be doing more of this. Mm -hmm. The scenes are not being as high level as that is. So what I'm seeing is that once you get up to doing full scenes with foreground, midground, background, multiple characters, action effects, that's when you start dropping balls. And things aren't quite landing right and things are kind of getting half shod right but when you're able to put all your focus into one character like this mm -hmm. or like that one too yeah or this one's quite good too yeah then it's quite good mm -hmm. so just do that whatever I, I saw here that it was part of a class okay so whatever process they showed you and had you to go through just keep doing it mm -hmm. it's working okay um, across the board, values is being an issue. So here we're having pretty muddy values where the darks and the lights of each plane and kind of zone of the image is sort of just bleeding into the next area. And we're not getting clear distinctions between the different planes and areas. Uh, right now, the, the main focus is right here on his arm, his sword, and his magic. Everything is right there instead of being like the on the face. character's face itself or the character as a whole. Uh, we're going to put this in as a little side thing. It's not real bad, but we do see it, which is purple. There's a lot of people that use a lot of purple. Yeah. You don't use that much purple. It's not that much. But, but the use of it is common. We yeah. see a lot of it um, in the shadows and or or when painting things in low light. Mm -hmm. people, people have a tendency to just reach for the purple. Yeah, it's kind of an un a color of uncommitment. Because they don't really know whether the it's shadow should be cool. warm or cool. So they kind of split the difference. Mm. 
but it's better just to take the time to figure out which one it should be and commit to that. So I messed with this one a little bit. Character portraits definitely work out there for that. And I know that these are commissioned. So one, I'm not going to critique the design of these characters. This is probably what they're supposed to look like. But you're not developing them as, as much as you could. If you have the skills to do that other character we just saw, mm -hmm. I know you can push these further. Now, realistically, depending on where you got these commissions, maybe you got paid 50 bucks, maybe you got paid 500. I have no idea. Um, if it's a low commission, somebody's tossing you 50 bucks and you're just like, okay, you know what? Sure, I'll just take some experience. Yeah. But still, you need to bring your best because you are putting this in your portfolio. Yeah, that's the distinction. We're not suggesting that you kill yourself working hard on a, a low-paying commission. Yeah. That's not it. You can do those as many as you want, whatever. No judgment here. We, we've done that. We've mm -hmm. cut corners. But when you're putting it in your portfolio, when you're trying to get those bigger clients, you really have to dazzle mm -hmm. them you have to impress them when you're trying to get their attention and so it's not good to put pieces that we're not spending that much time on that are just for quick commissions yeah. if you are going to put it on your port in your portfolio you need to develop it to a bit of a higher level so i messed with it some because i wanted to point out just a few things a lot of people like doing some of these portraits they're good uh, for a starter portfolio these are one of the better subjects that you can offer but we are running into a lot of heavy darks and things are losing their natural value uh consistency um, diana actually put out a blog article on the website about this based on loomis's book it's all in loomis's book i didn't make yeah. any any new discoveries it's all there um, but it has to do with keeping the values of your shadows consistent with each other. So what you want to do is you look at the base value. I'll say that the base value of this beard is something like this. It's not the highlight. It's probably somewhere around there. So the rule of thumb is find whatever the base value is that is being lit, you know, and then go halfway between that and black. And that should be your shadow value. Right now, what you're doing is you're taking anything that's in shadow and just pushing it into black. There is no halfway to it. So you're getting something that is off white and immediately transitioning in it to black. But when you do that, it, it breaks it because there should still be a value distinction between the beard the beard and the skin and the cloth because they all start at different value ranges. So that value range will get a little smaller because they're all getting closer to black. Think about it this way, okay? Whatever the value is of the beard in the light and whatever the value is of the skin in the light the difference between them, let's say it's 40%, okay? I don't know, I'm just picking a number. The shadow of the beard and the shadow of the skin should still be 40% apart. Mm -hmm. And right now you're making them the same. So yeah. That's what a value relationship means. Um, the same thing with the hood. Whatever the color of the hood is in the light, the distance between that and say the skin in the light that distance should be the same in their shadow sides. The shadow of the hood and the shadow of the skin should be the same distance apart on the scale. Okay? So that's what we're talking about. Things can get darker than halfway to black in a dark environment, but you don't want to get too dark for an illustration or you just won't see anything. And then if, yeah. you, if you print it, it'll compress even more, right? Now, you can get darker than that halfway to black, but you usually want to reserve those for occlusion shadows. That is just those tight little corners, like maybe down in here, that light just cannot get into that crevice. Uh, you're treating it right now like there is no ambient light, which we've got to raise up the ambient light. You know what's something that, that you could do here, too? It just occurred to me. 
is I've seen in some in some Warhammer pieces, and it reminded me this kind of situation where you have a guy wearing this, you know, something covering his head basically, and he's in a dark situation, and you need to light the face. And I think it was Ridley Scott in Prometheus, and they added lights to the inside of the mm-hmm. helmet and the inside of the suit to light the actor's face from the inside. So you could add a light back here. Mm-hmm. You could add a light in here to, yeah. you know, have a secondary light on the character's head and on his face to prevent it from sinking right into such darkness. Now, I mess with it some, just to give you an idea. Uh, did not spend that much time on it. Mm. But the idea is, okay, one, we got to just boost it up some so we can try to get more information out of what you already have there and then glaze back over everything with its natural base color in order to try to bring some value and color back in what was it 50 normal normally i put that at about 40 and that's going to give you you still have value separation you have light you have shadow you have base color this is more of what you should having as your general operating and then you can have you know played around with like if we didn't want to treat this l as just a dark mass maybe we're getting some light coming across here Mm -hmm. maybe there's bounce light that you could put some on his face right coming up underneath the eyes and stuff you need references for all that uh but that would be um an approach that would be way more printable it would work on a lot more screens just add Um, more visual interest too yeah and right now we're running so much color uh lack of color that we need to bring something back yeah um you've got skills Mm -hmm. i think it's just a matter of choosing i i would i would maybe pare down the scenes i wouldn't i know you basically only have about two scenes really in here i would focus on just getting the characters to a high level like this one yeah um developing them all like that um trying to get a handle on your values and building a portfolio of just really nice looking kind of grungy warhammer type characters that would Mm -hmm. be really nice and then for the scenes yeah i would recommend a class if you want to do scenes and there are several okay obviously we have our own um but there are other schools that mm-hmm. have classes on that subject because i think that would really benefit you um to get a good process and to have control over your values yeah we do note that you were learning blender in some classes and use blender some in various pieces that's great uh that's a great tool recognize that that is not going to solve all of your lighting and value issues. So that is something that you will have to handle at some point. You'll have to do your study in at some point. Okay. Well, that's all we've got on this one. We appreciate you submitting. Hopefully that was helpful. Next. Who's next? We've got Renato. Renato, are you here? Says, uh, my main goal is to work with tabletop RPG illustrations, mainly characters. Uh, eventually, I'd like to develop more skills to work with games like MTG. I've been getting some small client work here or there, but it's not frequent, and overall, it's really hard to get new jobs, so it's been frustrating uh, on the financial side. Yeah, but it is. Uh, I appreciate any feedback. Okay. So. It's always hard on the financial side, even even if you get big clients. It's still hard. Yeah, because you end up just spending more time doing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Computer is chugging there. Okay. Concept artist, illustrator. Another Brazil. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There's lots of talent in Brazil. Yes, there is. There really is. To tell tell the truth, to see like top level talent coming out of there. 
All right. I do feel like you are hitting a good subject matter of these. It's mainly standalone characters, creatures for RPG, TTRPG uh, games. Good subject matter for mm. you right now. The rendering on these, the thing that I do like is that you have a very clean rendering approach. And colorful, too. Yeah, you're not afraid of color. Uh, I see that you're branching into scenes right here. This was your D&D character doing an illustration of him. Okay. Good practice. These are... I'm always going to applaud people doing composition studies because so few people actually do composition mm -hmm. studies. It would be helpful if they were more varied. Um, Just try different things. Yeah. Know? Don't be afraid. At that stage, you can be as, you know, as experimental as you want. Mm -hmm. Try a different pose, different angle. Different actions going on. Mm -hmm. Uh... So, yeah, feel free to, to keep it loose. But that's okay. If that's your first scene, then yeah. that's very good. Uh, the overall result is, again, I'm going to say it's a very clean painting. I, I feel like it is cautious or a little reserved. And I think that's just due to experience. Like, the ground is very simple. The overall lighting is pretty simple. But what I do like is that you've kept so much of the piece in the midtones. We didn't get just black shadows and messiness everywhere. There's a lot of nice painting in here yeah. on the sword, on these items. It looks, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, very nicely yes. handled things. These pants look good. Yeah, just want to point that out. Uh... It is good that you're practicing this, but I do think that you're probably going to make better headway by doing higher quality characters rather than trying to increase the visual complexity of the image. And that's what we see a lot of times. Uh, so the feedback we give isn't always to just the one artist we're reviewing, but we try to put out help just educate the general community because a lot of people are usually in the same situation that if somebody is doing standalone character images like this and they're not getting that much traction with it and securing clients or securing bigger clients, a, a common thing that we see is them reaching to going, well, I must need to do more complex things. Yeah. I see Big, big artists are doing complex scenes, so that's probably what I need to do to find clients. But that's not the issue. The issue was uh, uh, those big artists could get work doing standalone characters as well. Uh, always choose higher quality over higher complexity. Because if you can't hit the quality necessary to secure work at this level it's going to be even lower quality once you make it more complex because you're all you're doing is now doing the character that you were already doing here plus more stuff plus more lighting yeah yeah it it makes it more things to have to get right right so anyway there's a lot of good stuff going on here in your pieces i like uh, which ones are standing out to you to me okay i really like some aspects of this design like these shoulder pieces i think are very cool and the sword i think the overall concept is really really nice i think the body on this dragon looks really oh, good oh yeah let's pull that up there were some really yeah uh i'm a fan of some of the scaling pattern that looks really really good yep like really good so this effect, guys, I want you to note this because this is one of the best ways to approach doing uh, like a dragonborn sort of semi-scale, semi-skin. He's sort of a man. Yeah. I mean, he's got man arms, man body. And that is in the highlight area, 
in the lit area, it highlights, but where it's not being highlighted, it's actually darker than the base skin. Mm -hmm. And that is a really cool way to get that effect. And you're giving just the hint of some dimensionality yeah, to some of these. Yeah, just a little brush stroke here and there to, to show the edge of the scale. Really, yeah. really nicely done, Renato. So other things that are particularly good, like a lot of people, <clears throat> probably even me, tend to not develop knees very much in my anatomy. I feel like you actually tried to work out a lot of forms here. Those look here. really good. I'm telling you, this looks good. But it's the faces and the heads that are on these that I feel like the head and the face is actually a step lower than a lot of the rest of the anatomy. Yeah, I feel like the head, it just needs more forms in here. Yeah. It's missing forms on the face on the nose area. I feel like the horns here is just a little too simple of a resolution mm -hmm. to that area. I kind of want some big longer horns, maybe two of them, Yeah. right? And then the other ones are kind of smaller. So there, there's things. Uh, I also feel like you could have done more with this costume. Yeah. It's very, very basic. The body looks great. Give it a great costume too, right? Mm-hmm. So on these, really try to find more of those secondary forms. We have a large, simple primary form to the head. And then we have some tight little eyes and textural detail, but we don't have anything in between. Look so that's what we're looking for. I was looking at some uh, reference of maybe some lizards or iguanas or turtles or different creatures like that that have some of those shapes in their heads. Yeah, let me... Oh, did you have I've got some refs. I'll, I'll just show you some refs that I've used before. Oh, the, uh, the alligator. The albino alligator is a really nice one to look at. There is such wonderful forms in this guy's head and the face. And because of his coloration... Uh, you can get a lot of detail and form information in those heads. So you can change the overall like shape of the head and make it more dragonborn. You can but, combine it with yeah. other heads. Like, yeah. Yeah, if you look at, like, I don't know what lizard it is or, or turtle that looks more dragon-y. Yeah, I, but find something. Komodo dragon or... Look at other artwork to see how they kind of add extra forms and stuff, but that would help. Oh, uh, let's keep going through some of these. Oh, I think we skipped one there. Again, clean render, character design. Here is, we, we talked about on the head, we needed the secondary forms. We got the big forms and we got tight forms. And that's essentially what we have here too is the idea of big, medium, small. We have the big, which is these big panels of fabric, the overall silhouette, the overall pieces. Uh, then we have some tight little details on some of the edges and on the buckles and stuff, but we don't have any of those mediums. And in medium type of pattern or, or ribbing on the fabric or designs something. or something. Yeah, I, I would... Think of also, if you have an all red costume like this, one thing you can do to just make it a little more interesting is push some of the reds darker than the others, right? So make them mm -hmm. a little different so that it's not all so flat. So like let the cape, maybe the cape and the hood be darker than yeah. the outfit. Not the same value, not but the, in the same, same family. Yeah, not the same exact red. Yeah. So something to think about. Yeah. Somebody to look at would be this. We uh, always we always show Aurora. Yeah. Aurora, if you ever watch this, <laughs> um, we're sorry for mentioning you so often, but your work is just it's exactly what what we're thinking of. So that's why we use it to you know as a visual example. I think Aurora has a really good representation of what the industry likes in these kind of standalone character illustrations mm -hmm. where it's not really heavily detailed. It has good read to it, identifiable shapes, 
the char- the type of the character comes through really well. The personality of the character comes really well. Mm-hmm. And she started with doing lots of these for years and then got into like a little more complex characters that have more stuff. More fantasy elements. More fantasy elements. And then she started getting into like semi-human things. We got other... Kind of a creature at that point. Yeah, getting into creatures, doing that. She did a variety of those. And eventually she started getting into doing full scenes. But she stuck doing this for a long time. She did loads of these. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a good guide to kind of follow is secure plenty of work doing this. And to the point... Or get these to... A really high level. Yeah. Um, because it's easier to get these to a high level. You can do that faster than, mm-hmm. than getting a scene to a high level. Yeah. So have those on hand. See how she kind of simplifies different things. How she controls the colors and the values for each area. And, and everything is, has just this little graphic quality to it. Mm-hmm. So it's good stuff. Okay, anything else on this? Uh, okay. So yeah, we're mentioning this to you because we definitely think that's a good direction for you. We think you have the skills to do that. Um, so overall, like to me, those are your strongest pieces on your portfolio. I'm gonna say, and these, like a lot of these look really, really good. Um, I'm gonna say that these Aliens, I know you were commissioned to do those. So, you know, it, it was a commission, you got paid. You have the client wanted these, these aliens, mm-hmm. that's fine. I think they're not as nice as your other pieces. Yeah. And I don't think they really showcase, like they're, they're, they're done well, they're rendered competently, but they're just not as, I don't know. They're a bit weird, right? Like, I, I, I don't yeah. know. They're not as approachable a subject as the others. And I've had some of these as well, which is the nature of the subject that they need for their scene or character or whatever does not do well for the mainstream portfolio. It It's so odd. And it... We don't know like whether this was your design or whether this design was handed to you. Uh, so if it was up to us, we'd say just turn these off and just go f- with these as being your lead. I think those probably have a stronger, uh, more approachable read. Um, again, on these, like there's some solid stuff on these, but I do think the faces are just not quite there yet. If you have the interest in doing a pass on the faces, I think that's I worth it. I think it's worth it because I like these pieces. I think the yeah. concepts are good. They're well rendered uh, if you want to open and show people what, yeah, what's going on. More. But the faces are holding them back, right? So more time on those faces, getting them really, really correct um, would, like, this is a great concept. It's very well executed. It's just this guy's face. It's a little too unrealistic for yeah. the rest of it, right? I know that this is a fantasy character and stuff, but always have a human face that's kind of driving the rendering. And just try to find someone, even yourself, just make that expression at that angle, just so you have the nuance of real life behind it. And then change up the forms for you know whoever this guy is. So I think you did some kind of a paint over. Oh yeah, I messed with this one. I forgot. Some kind of a paint over here for you, Renato. Oh, I was going to say on this, one of the best things to do that anyone can do, and I'm putting this up here for everybody, as including them, is to do comparison. Get your piece, such as, in this case, this piece right here, put it, some other pieces that are similar in nature next to it and write down notes of what are they doing that is better than what I'm doing, right? How could I learn from these? 
So on this, one of the things I immediately see is even though this armor is more elaborate than what you need, the addition of some extra dimensionality or pattern on the armor would make it a little more interesting to look at. Um, generally want to avoid just entire smooth flat areas like that across anywhere of the armor. We want to give it, uh, this is called fluting. We do these little raised ribbing kind of patterns that you see on armor it's just to help reinforce their strength. Uh, easy to run just some various pattern, you know, fluting along there just to break that up a little bit. Uh, again, I'm with you. Like, the idea of combining the scales with the armor is cool, but I feel like it's not it, quite there yet. I think it might actually have landed better if instead of that red kind of because it's not clear is that skin how does the yeah. skin stay fresh i you know it's just a weird kind of question it could just be another color of metal that's actually like the claws the teeth or whatever the, the nails the claws are real but then the part holding it is maybe gold or mm -hmm. iron or some other copper some other kind of colored metal so that you get Okay, it's still part of the suit of armor, but it's a different color of metal, right? Um, another thing we're noticing, right, when we compare them all, just looking quickly, the face is holding you back. Yeah. Okay? So, again, we, we mentioned that before. It's a recurring thing. It's not a bad face, but it's just not as correct as the other ones, right? Yeah. So, um, so we've got that. We've got the point about the fluting, Okay. I feel like she's a little wide around the waist. That was a point of, yeah. Even for a male character, it's like you either make them overweight, where they're overweight noticeably, if you commit and you make them big, or you make them, you know, the, the more regular size, even with yeah. the armor on, right? So you kind of have to make a choice. Is she meant to be overweight or is she an athletic, you know, build? If so, just bring it in a little bit for the silhouette. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do see here, like, there's a couple of ways you can take this. And you don't have to do this, but something to be aware of. Which is, this is a quite realistic take of a guy in some armor. And this one is too, like, proportions-wise, shape-wise. Now, this one is more stylized. I think this is from Tooth Wu, I believe. Mm. Uh, but you can see the kind of stylized shapes. So it's a little more dynamic and kind of angular and stuff. Uh, and that can work, too, if you want to go that direction. And for some of the work, I feel like you're doing a little bit of that, but, like, it's not carried everywhere. Uh, I did a minor repaint. It was actually one of the things that you just mentioned, which hmm. is getting a little wide, just trying to slim it up. And right now with the head tilt, the it's a... There's a conflict between the confident pose and then the head tilt kind of going down that's not it's a very unconfident sort of passive pensive it doesn't really fit with yeah. your gesture overall it's so we want off. the head to be nice and proud to go along with the proud confident pose which is why i'd say picking the head up and something else that you'll see on a lot of these is try to do more with the hair we saw that throughout several of the images is that the hair is usually quite flat. It doesn't have any body. It doesn't really have any design to it. Yeah, it's give not... it a little lift. Yeah. And I did just a little on the face, mainly moving the features down a little bit so the chin is a little smaller, getting more of that elven, you know, like small chin, little, little more pointy features. And... If we can actually thin up the eyebrows and just make them a little bit darker, and then they're going to read. So, I get obviously very rough, but maybe it gives you some ideas. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, so. we threw a bunch of information at you, so, you know, take what was useful, um, but that that's 
those are our thoughts. We think you have good skills. You just need it to make a few little changes here and focus. That's it. Yeah, if anything, like if you have the chance to get, I'd say like probably in a good place for a mentor. If you could do check-ins occasionally with someone. I don't think you need a class unless you're going to try to really get into scenes. Into yeah. like full, you know, like full illustrations. But if you are just doing the characters, I don't think you need a class for that. You A mentor would be good or just someone to check in with regularly. I, I think if you had someone, and they strike me as the kind of artist who... If they just got a couple of paint overs of certain little things and just saw how to implement that little change, they'd immediately be able to pick it up yeah. and start doing that. Yeah, you don't need much. You're yeah. you're very close. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, oh, Lawrence see. is here. Hi, I haven't seen Lawrence in so long. Hi, Lawrence. Lawrence got a concept art job. I don't know how long you've been there, so I, I forgive me if you've been there for a while, but... <laughs> I just want to congratulate you. Uh, so next up we have Amber Mountain Art. I assume your name is Amber. Unless that's the name of the mountain. I don't know. Uh, my link goes to five images. And I know portraiture isn't your usual thing. Well, portraiture is pretty common. Animal portraiture, less so. Uh, so I understand you may choose to ignore this. No, we'll let, take a look at it. I do a realistic style, and I spent a lot of time developing brushes and techniques to do the hair with this series. I improved, I think, my brushes and their use, starting with Chef. Uh, sorry at the watermarks. Animal th art theft seems to be higher than average. Okay. Really missed the challenges. Uh, oh, well, thank you. I'm glad uh, you remember the challenges. We're going to do challenges again. Yeah. We are. They're coming back. We're just very... We're working really hard to bring, <laughs> bring you new stuff. Yeah, we're working on new content every day. It's just slow going. So here we've got just the prettiest brown eyes. And... And more of them. And more. Bernice Mountain Dog. All right, Amber. Not our usual portfolio to look at. So we're not... We're not sure the base that we're working from here in that I don't, it wasn't clarified in the message or here on the site, because you just say animal and portrait art, whether this is something you're trying to do as work or career or whether this is, you're just looking for input on like how to render your your pet yeah, we don't better. know if this is like, um, if you're asking for our input on your portfolio as a professional portfolio, or whether you just want kind of technical input on the painting. So we're going to throw a couple of comments at you, that which is applicable to you and your goals. Feel free to take anything else. Hey, just ignore it. Okay. So here's a variety of observations and thoughts. I will note that art theft is real. I've certainly had my art stolen and used yeah. in a variety of ways over the last 20 years. I've been told more than once that my art is being printed on playmats in China. <laughs> so, you know, whoever whoever's doing that, I am I can't stop you. <laughs> so, one of the first things you have to look realize is that is always going to be a thing there is always going to be low lives out there who will steal content and like print it on a pillow or whatever it is um but i still don't suggest putting copy rights over top of your artwork it prevents us from really it's seeing your work yeah you know your own clients or potential clients or people who are just fans of your work don't really get to enjoy the work because of that. I feel the same so, way about when people used to do that on DeviantArt with like yeah. the big DeviantArt logo. 100% put your name, 
Put a copyright, put the year small letters down at the bottom of your image. Everybody should do that. But don't, don't compromise your entire portfolio visual quality because of the 0.0001% of people out there who might do something I'm with it. I'm not saying you should be okay with that, you know, yeah, but look I'm at just it. Saying. One way to look at it, you know, the way I, I look at it personally is the people that are stealing from you, they were never going to buy from you anyway. Yeah. So you haven't actually lost anything. Well, anyways. Okay. Now that aside, if you are wanting to do pet portraits and more of them, I certainly recommend doing more variety. I understand that this is probably your favorite breed of dog. They're very nice. And clearly one of the best breeds out there. But we need to see more variety. This is too niche. You're, yeah. You know, if you're trying to get clients, you're only going to appeal to people who own this particular type of dog. So if that's something you want to do, pick out other dog breeds, Pick out cats, Maybe probably cats, cats uh, as well, and possibly horses. Those are probably going to be your big three that people would actually want. Maybe people like horses or yeah. birds. Potentially birds. Canaries. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's true, Christina. Watermark isn't going to stop them. They There's AI right now that is watermark removal AI. It's just autofill. Yeah. They, they just remove it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So that would be what you would want to do if you want to do more of those. Uh, talking about the, the rendering itself, uh, quite nice. Uh, I Very good, clean rendering. Photographic. Very photographic. I love the softness and the texture that we get out of the hair. It, like, that's what that hair looks like. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I get the soft layers to the way that the hair is and everything. So, what I'm I'm going to make I'm going to make a point here, and I'm not saying that what you're doing is incorrect. It is artistic choice, but there's a point at which you might not want to stay as faithful to the photo because I feel like there's not as much that your creative... Uh, artistically. Cre yeah, artistically. It doesn't feel... It feels like a copying exercise, you understand? Yeah. Like a copying rendering exercise. And I think you're kind of limiting yourself in terms of what you can artistically contribute to the image. Like, don't you want to contribute more to it? Maybe you don't. But if you do, then we have to think beyond the photo, right? We tell our students, yeah. copying is good. That's, that's, that's the first base. You can copy a photo. Now, can you interpret the photo? Can you bring more beauty to the image than what's in the photo? Yeah. Right, so we have some examples. Let me show her some examples of what we're talking about, so you understand. So that so yeah, here, uh, Mari Liss was the artist we're looking at on this. I don't know if we're saying that right. Um, this is not what the photo. I can guarantee you, this is not what the photo looked like. <laughs> so they had to take some artistic license in order to make it more than what the original subject was. And she does it with this beautiful lighting. She adds like kind of this angelic light to her subject. You can see it here on this dog. It's really beautifully handled, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a copy of a photo. This is better than a photo, Yeah. right? And this is what will bring people to you and pay you. Because if they want a photo, they can just take a photo, right? Print it on a canvas. Um, yeah. But this is something more so really favoring the forms really boosting the yeah. colors where you can boost the colors it's like on this this dog does not have that deep thick fur you can go play with but what she is doing is bringing out so much of that form information all the brush strokes are used in order to tell the contour 
of the face and the muzzle. And you get to feel how all these forms are moving. And they're infusing so much color into the black. We've got the blues and the browns and the grays and all of that that keeps it from feeling flat. So, like, coming in and adding the backlight. Now, I don't... It's not that hard. Even if this dog was not backlit to begin with, it's not that hard to add a backlight like this to a dog uh, portrait. So that's something that you could do. Or the same thing with, you know, beautiful cat piece here. So what is the that you can do to go beyond the reference photo? Mm -hmm. So I look at this, I get a great sense of form. I get a sense of lighting. Here's some other one. Different These are artists. traditional. Yeah, this is lovely too. Like it's not yeah. at some. I, I love this kind of almost unfinished look where you can see part of the drawing, part of the sketch underneath, and then just the focal point is rendered. Um, but again, not overworked, not over detailed. Not every strand or you know a fur of hair is there. It's yeah. just enough. So when I look at this, I just feel more like it's a faithful rendition of a photo, which is great because it probably captures the look of the animal but it has a flatness to it where if you were to emphasize more of the form, I could get a feeling of the, the dimensionality of the head. Right now, the values of like the neck and the muzzle. This is all one. Yeah, it's all one value. So you've got to bring your understanding of three-dimensional form to bring out more volume, to create some lighting on this, maybe some warm, warm and cool balance between the, the you know the light areas, the the white areas. So with this is just us maybe encouraging you, challenging you a little bit to try some of that, and maybe you like it, maybe you don't. But there you know you ask for our opinions. So yeah, and don't be discouraged if. You try this, and, you, and the first time it doesn't come out looking mm -hmm. good. It's not going to come out good the first time. So if you really want to give it a shot, you know, try it a couple of times. Try it a couple of weeks where you're just painting different animals and trying to accentuate their forms and bring out that light. Yep. Just a suggestion. I don't know if that's the kind of feedback you were looking for, but that's about all we can <laughs> offer on, on a portfolio like this. Yeah. Okay, next up is David. Oh, we know David. And David was in a class with us. David, are you here? Let us know if you're in the chat. And if not, I guess you'll watch this later. It says, I took your illustration course. Yeah, we remember. Uh, I remember the piece. Uh, I've been working on building a portfolio of illustration. My goal is to work with companies like Paizo and Fantasy Flight. I haven't had luck with them yet. Uh, picking up a few things for indie publishers and RPGs. That's good. Good. That's good. Whatever you can get there. Any suggestions how to push things further? Anything that you should replace? Okay. So let's pull over here first. Uh, Italy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the piece that uh, David did in class, the mm -hmm. fantasy illustration class. And uh, I think the two new images... And this was also new, I guess. I think a lot of them are new. Yeah. The order may not be Yeah, I don't think this is the right... These are obviously older. Some of these other ones. Oh, it's just moved it. I would turn this one off. I think this has a distinctly lower quality than what you're showing in some of these others. So that one... What is this one full size? It's, just it's a portrait. bust. Okay. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, that's nice. These are nice. I'd like to see one more detail pass on the faces. It just feels a little, a little soft. Uh, subject matter is pretty good. You're mm -hmm. hitting the fantasy, little sci-fi with kind of a 40k thing going on That's here. That's a bit fantasy too. Yeah. Now, we looked over this. There is not one thing you're you're in the stretch between the semi-pro stretch and there isn't one thing that you're doing that is compromising your work 
I think that you should be soon finding work because there's a lot of stuff that you're doing is quite good. Um, I feel like this is a largely successful image. It's very well painted. I think it feels like it captures the feeling of, you know, the 40K. But we'll go through and point out a few things that just don't land quite as well as they could. They're weakening it yeah. a little bit. So th we're not trying to pick on David here, but David asked us to point out, okay, what am I missing? No, so, he knows that. He's yeah. always taking well. I'm just letting them well. know, you know, viewers. So if I was going to be... Basically, if you gave this to me and I was to improve this, what would I do? First thing I'd see is I'm getting kind of an odd scene playing out where you've got this massive knight character in this power armor with this huge sword slaying this much smaller unarmored woman. I don't know the story, but it's right. We're, we're just looking at it objectively Without context. As, as if we don't know because we don't know. But like that's how an art director they probably wouldn't know the context either. Yeah. Right. So this was fan art. I don't know if these are significant characters. I don't know if this is a major point in the story. All I know is what I see. I feel like if I only see this guy, that this is dramatic battle scene. But it feels one-sided. It feels like overkill. <laughs> yeah. So what I feel would improve the piece uh, would be sub her out for something far more threatening. Uh, make it, you know, 40K, what are they, the Tyranids? The insect creatures? I don't know what they're called. Uh, I have superficial knowledge of 40K. I think they're called the Tyranids. Like, if you have one of those coming up and he just sliced the head off of it and its head is falling off. Basically, we want something like badass for him to yeah. fight, right? Some badass creature, another space marine. I don't know, you know, like some some badass thing. Because right now it's almost like he's killing a kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit... Uh, um, and also, like, was she fighting him with this tiny knife? I don't, you know, yeah. it, it feels like it's not worthy. She's not worthy of this battle scene. We want something badass for him to and fight. We get this massive sword with a fair amount of blood on it, and I don't see any injuries on her. I know that you didn't want to make it gory, which I understand. I wouldn't either, but we got to find a way to kind of explain mm -hmm. explain what just happened. So that this is one of those things where you're going beyond, at this point, we're going beyond rendering questions and talking about visual narrative. What is the story that's being conveyed here on this in this moment, this frozen moment? Uh, another smaller thing would be the posing of the character, where we've got the shoulders and the hips facing the same direction, but the problem is he just made a swing, mm -hmm. which means that his chest needs to be more rotated than his hips are. More that way. So his hips need to be further on this side where this leg is, and his upper body is turned from that. And that would help sell the feeling that he just swung his arm. Small stuff with that, but it adds up. Okay, let's look at some others. Uh, again, largely successful piece. Beautifully painted, David. I've got nothing Bad yeah. to say about your painting, your lighting. Uh, this is a standard kind of planeswalker approach to an image. Character mainly standing there in a not completely boring pose. They're just holding something, looking heroic. Uh, this is based on one of the briefs from the fantasy class. And let's just pull it up closer. Everybody can enjoy some of the rendering going it's on It's very here. nicely done, I gotta say. Yeah. Beautiful control of the values and the detail in the background and the midground. Uh, 
A lot of people have a hard time with that. You really got that down. That That's reading quite well. Primary thing here, I think we're both on the same page of character design. Mm -hmm. So the overall impression of the character is fine. If you want to go mainly golds and purples, that's fine. Uh, it does have an Egyptian, overall Egyptian feel to it. But it's a bit a bit too simple design wise. All right, for the elevated rendering you're giving it. It almost looks like a theater costume. Mm -hmm. You know, or like, you know, it, it looks like a costume. It doesn't look like real clothes. Yeah. So the 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 pieces on the arms, the pieces on the legs, they're really really basic it's just you know a purple piece of purple something with some gold and then a gold snake on all of them and the snakes are all the same there's no other decoration there's no smaller shapes it's all the same right yeah um and that i think that's one of the things holding it back i think these pieces over here they just they look very strange very flat and cut out and they mm -hmm. don't they don't look like real Egyptian clothing or accessories. So on this, you've got the right primary form to these, but the secondaries and the tertiaries aren't working. And look at what patterns you're using. So you're using very blocky straight line patterns that aren't really elegant. They're not sophisticated. They're very basic and again we're, this is another place where we're getting like a flat piece of gold with no design work on it right this is where we can get more out of it now i just went to pinterest and i just put in egyptian warrior we're not suggesting you copy this okay yeah. this is just an example of the distribution of shapes and how the individual pieces were handled and how egyptian and sophisticated they they should look right so here you notice like instead of just having one massive thick piece by making it thinner by making it smaller pieces it gets the feeling that it could be more articulated right now like the metal pieces on him don't feel like they could even bend there is no hinge points there is no point uh, which you can take it off or it can fold around or That's anything. That's one of the things that makes it look unrealistic, right? Yeah. It's completely solid pieces of metal. Uh, so yeah, the smaller pieces, it's adding the little things like the lapis lazuli blue uh, stone in it. It's having different sizes of detail that it doesn't just have a snake here, but it has like this other pattern and this other color inside of that. And then subtle ribbing patterns on different pieces of the fabric. Uh, and there's just a variety of different, you know, people that create this sort of thing. That might be AI. I don't know. Uh, nice piece here too. Yeah, look at the wrist pieces and the, the leg pieces, right? The armor. And how those shapes, they've got the, the elegant kind of Egyptian Vs, the triangular shapes. Um, those are things that are missing from your design are those triangular shapes that are really typical of the Egyptian look, right? So if you're doing yeah. an Egyptian guy, you've got to give us some more things. You gave us a kind of almost a pharaoh crown on him, mm -hmm. but the rest of the costume does not look Egyptian, right? It's like sort of a light suggestion on the top piece, but the rest, we kind of need some more. Yeah, one of the classic visual cues of that kind of Egyptian attire is that that fabric gathers in the front right there around that around belt, the belt cinch. Yeah. And here we're not getting that. We're just getting kind of a skirt sort of thing. So if you wanted to get more of that feel, you, you know, using that pattern. So if you are willing to spend more time, I think you could I think do it's a worth paint it. over. I think this guy could be a lot more badass yeah. if you gave him just a nicer costume, a more detailed, refined costume. Yeah. 
So uh, loving the skills. So it's just that design there that's getting it. Because otherwise, uh, the control, the values, the colors. Everything is beautifully yeah. painted. Yeah. The face looks really good, too. Okay. We've already been over this in class, so we're not going to go over that. Uh, this was a newer piece. MTG Vampire Inspiration. And did some color studies. Did some character design studies. This works. Again, this is kind of what we're getting with a lot of yours. The painting itself works. Like, you paint things well. But it's a little bit of that design and, and the visual narrative to it. That on that level, it starts having a little issue. Now, I think you nailed it earlier when we were kind of talking about, like, what's what an issue might be on this. What did I say? <laughs> well, I don't remember. With oh, um, the costume. Well, it's because I know the brief, right? And I yeah. also know that the brief was kind of to do an MTG vampire, right? And the MTG vampires look a certain way. And there's a couple of things that you're doing here that communicate certain things. And I don't know if you're trying to communicate that or yeah. not. So for example, an MTG vampire is usually sophisticated, right? And we've got some things here that are not very sophisticated on the character, like a little headband with the two little, you know, wings. It's it's almost it's almost like something a streamer would wear on Twitch, you know? It, mm -hmm. it kind of just reminds me of that. Um, the ponytail, the kind of frilly lace-up bodice, it's a bit Lolita, right? Like, yeah. it's almost a bit schoolgirl and it's not really the the power, the uh, the might of an MTG vampire. Now, this could work if the brief was to do kind of a frilly kind of a different type of scene, uh, you know, uh, a an MTG vampire that's kind of playing with her food or, you know, yeah. being kind of silly or coy. Um, but that's not what this brief was. This brief was just about kind of a foreboding presence, a presence of doom. And yeah, you have, a very threatening sort of power coming from this undead character. But it's being contrasted by that a little juvenile yeah. of yeah. the red ribbon and the little hair band and the frilly skirt. But it's odd because I feel like you got the right tone. Yeah, here down you had here. you had some powerful designs, and even this one, if you remove the headband, it's yeah. it's got what it needs. But then I don't know what happened when you got to the rendering stage. You abandoned some of that stuff, and you made her look more, you know, almost childlike. So, I. I don't know if you wanted to take this a different direction. It's not wrong, okay? Yeah. It's not a mistake. It's just we know what the brief was, right? So we don't know if you were deviating from the brief on purpose. You just wanted to make her look like a pretty girl vampire. Mm -hmm. Or if you you just didn't realize the deviation in the communication aspects. Now, in this case, if you're wanting to go with this more colorful kind of direction you're going with her... And the sort of vibe that we've got, I'd say take away this fur because it doesn't make sense. The fur up here, one, color-wise, doesn't mesh with anything else on her costume. You might want to make it black. Black might, might work. It might work. Or otherwise, I would consider just removing it. But then he's got to solve the Yeah, cape. then you would have to solve where that cape attaches. I would just make it black. I think one yeah. issue that you mentioned earlier is we see that you were trying to handle the wing on this bat, right? Because yeah. the bat is purple and the skirt is purple. So your solution was to put that mist, that cloud back there, which is kind of turning purple over here for some reason, yeah. which is strange. But you, there's a better solution. So it looks like you were almost trying to backlight the wing. That's good. That's a good instinct. You could bring that wing into the light, like lighten it, mm -hmm. light it from the back, and let the skirt be darker instead of the yeah. other way around. Right now, the wing is standing out because it's a dark against a medium. Mm -hmm. We'll change that and make the skirt the dark and make the wing the medium. 
And you can treat it like there's just kind of shadow going on the bottom half of her. We don't need to explain why there's a shadow there. She's just... There's more spotlighting on their upper body. Yeah, fine. you don't want to make it too colorful like that because then it's yeah. going to compete with your focal point, but just a little bit more. Um, overall, we are fans of the bats. I feel like the, the bat circling around, having this one there, that's nice. Yeah, that worked really well. Yep. And if, if I'm going to pick on you for one more thing, David, you don't need to have that staff there, but if you're going to have it there, I would give it a nicer design. You yep. know, it's a bit... It's just... A little simple. It's the same thing she has on her head. Yeah. I think you can do better, is what I'm saying. I know you can, actually. Okay, this one. Lord of the Rings fan art. Done for Artem. I like this piece. Kobotov. I like all your pieces, but I think this is a nice piece. Again, like, beautifully painted. Yeah, so this one... I'm, I'm assuming that you just made up the scene because um, it's fan art and that it's, you weren't working from a brief or something. Uh, lean, in, lean into what this scene is about, which is this massive horse-headed uh, Gondorian... What do you call that thing? Battering ram? Battering ram, yeah. you know, in this door. So the problem with the scene is that you're showing it after all the cool action is already finished. Uh, and what would be much more engaging is to catch it doing its thing. So if instead of what we have now, we get this door, we take it off the hinge up here, we take it off the hinge here, it's kind of half laying against the wall. And diagonal. This door is still flinging open. It just busted these things off their hinges. This door is over here. We still have splinters in the air flying out in chunks from the door. It doesn't have to be a load of them. We can have a couple of them close to camera. It'd be enough to establish what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anyone... Pulling the ropes. Pulling the ropes. Normally there are ropes tied to this that everybody's like yanking in unison that drive this. So we might want to see at least some ropes being pulled off to the sides. It would be nice if there was maybe someone in here kind of running away from the door. or Yeah. That's just optional. Uh, we've got a lot of dead space up here. I don't know if that was for a title or something. If it's not, then I'd say make this tower taller back there so we don't have it just in line with the head i'll then have a lot more smoke and fire coming off the top of it yeah yeah and have that It'll add excitement yeah yeah fill it up there so that sort of thing is where you'd get where what you already have at the same skill level you're already at and just pick a more dynamic way to show that same subject you've got all the skills you need debbie like, the painting skills are there. Like, look at this. This looks really, really nice. Yeah. I and the, the angle on the sword and the hand. It's it not easy to get that right. So, really nice rendering on this guy. And for this, I'll make a couple of suggestions of improvement. I assume this was also fan art. I think I can't do much because the computer is super laggy in here. All I can really do is point. Uh, this area back here feels a bit tacked on with those guys. Um, I would consider not having that heel horizon up there. And instead, just have some maybe silhouettes of some guys back here. And then I guess you would just have foliage or something up there. Um, just because it kind of takes the attention away that this guy, everything kind of leads up to this guy. Oh, then it's like, oh, yeah, but there's also some guys up over him visually. Just standing around. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know that they're adding that much. And it throws off the perspective a little bit because I feel like the horizon lines down here. Okay, um, uh, 
I think some more tension could be put in here. It's so close to camera. I know it's not a focal point, but it's just, it's right there. It feels a little too blurry yeah. for something that that's that close to us. Uh, it would be great to see maybe just some other smaller branches or logs. Or maybe this has been here long enough that, you know, the dirt has piled up next to the log right there. And we've got like clumps of, or maybe some rocks are visible. Mm -hmm. Just break it up with some rocks with some moss on them or something. We just need a little more terrain development down there. And this is a small thing, but it goes to anybody who's trying to do... Uh, There's always, always students doing dappled light. So yeah. if you are a fan of dappled light, this is for you. It's working pretty well here in that you're basically painting the whole scene, not worried about the dappled light. And then you're coming in and adding some overexposed little spots. And that's a good way to do it. However... This is right in that we've got these basically soft circular patterns down here where it's hitting the top of the log. But any time that it's hitting something that is more of a vertical plane like he is, these are going to become long streaks. They're not going to be a little elongated. They're going to be much elongated. So we're going to get patterns like this. It's like going down a cylinder, right? Yeah. The light's going to get pulled along the plane. So that light's coming down and it's just gonna skim down that surface for a longer, uh, unless, yeah. no, you can't get them all circular like that. The top facing planes, it makes more sense. Yeah, so you get that like up here where it's more just circular. I mean, that's what we got for you right now. Um, you're doing the right stuff, it's, little more time and focus on kind of the visual narrative, uh, being a little more critical about the character design choices. The costume design. Yeah. Yeah, developing your costumes and being aware of, of your narrative, like pushing this piece to have a little bit more oomph, more action, kind of thinking about, well, what am I really saying, you know, in a piece when there's an action going on? Yeah. So yeah, you're you're advanced enough now that you don't have to worry about painting or materials or values. You're you're beyond that. You got all that under control. Now it's the communication thing, the the and the design that matters. Yeah. If you just address that, I don't. You're you're so close. Like you'll be getting work very soon. Okay. We have Jom. We don't often get a landscape artist. It's nice to see some landscapes submitted. Uh, I did a piece review by Clint a while back, and I've been trying to work my way towards a portfolio specialized in environmental illustration, hopefully to work with Watsi on lands or d and really appreciate any feedback towards the three or four most recent pieces on my art station, or even just thoughts about how to get work from Watsi. Uh, for people that might be new to the channel or, you know, what we talk about. If you're unaware, Watsi, Wizards of the Coast, who owns Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, does not have an open email submission anymore. They, they have it for to. several years. Yeah. They used to have it, but it's they, they shut that down. Yeah. So, there... It's only by referrals now. Or if you go somewhere and meet an art yeah. director and show them your work. Uh, for Jom, I would certainly say, if that's your eventual goal, that's great. Get whoever you can get right now anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think over time, if you're getting enough work from other people... Yeah, people waste a lot of time waiting around for Watsi. Don't waste... Don't, don't wait for them. No. Um, you know... If you don't know any games or companies other than those two, go to a bookstore, go to a game store, look at all the board games that are there, write down the name of the publisher or the name of the company, uh, even see if there's any other names of who might have worked on it, who created the game, whatever. Go find these people. If they need art like this, 
send them an email and they mm -hmm. might hire you. Like it's, it's, it's really that simple. If they don't need you, they won't. Right. But yep. waiting just for two companies or for Hasbro to, you know, open up their email submissions. I think you could be getting work right now and mm -hmm. other companies if you, if you wanted to, I mean, I don't know how much you're getting currently, but I think you could be getting it if you were applying to those places. Yeah. So, uh, immediately good read on the portfolio. I love that you are finding a subject that you enjoy doing, that you can do at a high level, that there is market for. And just doing landscapes, that's great. So let's look at these. Yeah, the, the render on these is just beautiful. And I don't feel like you're trying to cut corners anywhere. Everything has a nice control to it. There's attention given everywhere. Yeah. Every little spot has cool little shapes and, and details in it. Mm -hmm. So. A <laughs> little slow there. Okay. What a little cutie up there. In order to get more work, I think a serious thing that you will have to do is provide more variety. Because what you're showing on the top four is I can do beautiful sunlit locations. Like mountains. Mountains. Uh, yeah, and you need to be able to do that 100%. But we also have to be able to do a lot of other things. Let's say like MTG lands are so with these kind of companies a lot of different kind of what would you call them biomes swamps uh mountains islands deserts forest forest like just look up what are the standard mtg lands and there's like seven types of forget what all they are and do one for each one Show that you can do, oh, you know, can you do a place that's all magma and rocks? The lava land or, you know, the, um, oh, up a bit, like the kind of sky bridges type yeah. of thing. I don't know what you'd call that, but uh, floating rocks, floating islands, that's a common one. Or the one where it's raining, it's misty, it's kind of dreary and dark. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need to now express some more of these kind of different moods and, and different terrains in you have the skills and now it's a matter of showcasing that you can do things like that because they do give those out a lot oh yeah like those these are kind of the standard ones that they always want so try different lighting setups like this is uh johannes voss did this very cool lighting very dynamic. This isn't just your classic sunny day, everything's pretty. It's got a mood to it, right? And they have fantasy elements, like what we yeah. were saying about the floating rocks, about like, this is very kind of fantasy, right? You have this cliff kind of ending in a point, and then you have clouds and these rocks that are just kind of there coming out of the clouds, right? It's, it's a bit fantasy-ish. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to think about. So here, if anybody's wanting to do MTG lands, Think about how you can push these with that fantasy twist. Here he's got giant rock, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> things floating around there. Buildings. You go on and you be able to do buildings. Now, at this day and age, you probably need to learn some 3D to do those because if it's MTG, and they ask you to do the one with like the cathedral world. I'm, well, I'm pretty sure this is how Titus made this yeah. one. So he's been pretty open about his process. And most of them, I think, and Grady as well did this one. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are using 3D and, and photo assistance to, to make these images. I'm not saying that they all do. All right. Um, but I've seen enough process shots mm -hmm. that I can say that. So if you don't know any 3D... Um, it might be worth looking into because they are going to ask for things at unusual angles like these rocks yeah. or man-made things like towers, like buildings. Mm -hmm. It might ask you for a whole city, you know? 
Yeah, there are a lot of MTG locations that are very building heavy. And that's going to fall right on you if you're the, the location guy. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to do stuff like this. So show them that you're up for that and you can tackle any of that stuff. Because what you don't want is, I've never done a piece like this. They hire you and then your first piece is an assignment like this. Like it's a nightmare to be in that situation. Yep. Um, okay, I did a small thing on one of these. So let's just take this one. What I want to... The note is this is so well painted, I'm not actually critiquing the, the rendering here, but it might be good for you to print some of these off. Just to see how they look in print. Right. Mm -hmm. What you'll usually find and what, in my experience, you are always going to lose 10% of the detail, 10% of the saturation and the contrast when you print it versus what you see on screen. So whatever resolution, like you're gonna lose a little bit, you're gonna lose a little of the pop, and this is already so nuanced that you're gonna essentially lose a lot of this detail because the colors are so close. Yeah, these are gonna, this is gonna flatten out and that's yeah. gonna flatten out. All of that's gonna just turn into one color when you print it off. The other thing is be careful of everything having the same, in this case, bluish hue to it. It can, it can work pretty well with uh, a scene that you see online like this. But as soon as you try to print this off, a lot of printers, this is basically just going to turn out blue. Like the cyan in the print process is going to just overwhelm everything else. So what I would suggest is make sure you're balancing the values and the contrast and the colors before you call them done. To try and avoid that a little bit. Yeah. So I went through a little bit like if this was mine and I was doing that last pass, I'll show you what I do, which is first up, just using the levels or the curves in order to try to get some more contrast. Right now, we don't hardly have anything in the last 20%. So we won't have any good darks for anything to contrast It's okay against. to have a high key image. Yeah, But just fine. realize that when it prints, it might print very flat because of that. So that's going to print with truer colors because the screen can show more color at a high value than a print can. Mm -hmm. You lose, lose a lot there. Next up, we want to balance the colors themselves. Because right now, this is very blue. And I remember a card that I did. It wasn't until the card was printed that I realized how much of a color Tint. tint it had. And I ended up having to fix that before I posted it online. Because I was like, oh my gosh, I got so used to looking at it. I totally didn't even see the tint anymore. So... Expanding the palette out, not by repainting it, but just going into the color balance. In this case, it was in the mid-tones and adding a lot of red into the mid-tones and some yellow in order to try to warm it up. And then here, just trying to get a little more pop out of it with a lightened layer. Again, this blue is going to be really strong, potentially having a little gradient to the sky that it warms up slightly as it comes down towards the horizon. And then lastly, this is again, your, basically this is your focal point. And we want to get as much out of that detail as we can. So just working that so it's a little more contrasted to get a little more of that detail out. And you, if you look at the before and after, it's a significant difference. And, and then, you see how blue that looks? Like you don't notice it at first. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't see how kind of pale... It is, yeah. So that would be what you would need to do in order for these to print well on a card um, because you were specifically talking about that. Uh, your landscape painting skills are killer. All right, I don't have any problem with the way that you render water or uh, mountains or whatever. You're not 
um, skimping on time. Yeah. Like if you look at all these beautiful rocks, the way they're rendered or clouds, like you're putting in a lot of effort. So that's good. Yeah, it's good that you saved some of your process shots because in T minus, you know, 20 minutes, somebody's going to just say, nice AI piece you got there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was it. Uh, yeah, just make sure that you're pushing that fantasy element on these. Find something to do uh, like on this. All right, we got an arched cave right there. Can we have another massive one right here? Can we have another one that's 2,000 feet tall back here? All right? can we have this an ongoing thing that everything along this coastline just turns into these arches? We got to find some way to push it where it's, it can't just be a normal place. This is a fantasy version of the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just at the portfolio overall, are there any pieces you think um, jumps should drop? Uh, yeah, I would definitely drop this one. And I'm leaning towards dropping that one as well. I, I'm 50-50 because one, it shows that you did a building. So that's good. But also don't think it shows the amount of nuance that we get from these. Mm -hmm. So compositionally, this one's kind of... There's some strange things going on with the composition. Yeah, we got a big flat area over here. And I feel like this should just be centered. I just don't know why we have so much over here when that's the focal point. So that's kind of why I'm going iffy on that one. Uh... Mm -hmm. I would... I feel like you had a really killer yeah. image here. Like, this could have been amazing if you'd made this like a portal or some kind of magic mirror that's yeah. in the forest. Um, like, that would have been a really cool moment in a game to come across this in, in a forest. Mm -hmm. But then you didn't develop that idea. You you just took that out and put some a guy back there. It's just not... It doesn't have the same Yeah, this feels impact. more mundane. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know that we need to see these variations. I, I would potentially just paint this one up and possibly just replace the one that you have. Yeah, I there's something going on there a little bit, but it's so little that it, yeah. Overall though, killer skills really. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right, we're already running long. Uh, so let's move on to the last one. Uh, okay, comment here was... From Tunda. Tunda, yeah. I'm currently working on a portfolio that can get me a job in character uh, concept or illustration. Love to work on D&D, &D, Pathfinder, MTG someday. Any feedback would appreciate it. My portfolio uh, I've used to apply to position that looks of art can be found here. Okay. We're always mention this, which is if you're still trying to secure work and you're not already established in a career, don't spread yourself thin by trying to go for concept art and illustration. That's going to slow you down from reaching either one. Yeah, it says, you say that you're applying for positions. I don't know if you're in the chat, Tunda. If you are, let us know. What kind of positions are you talking about? Are you talking about like concept art jobs? If so, what kind of concept art jobs? because your portfolio is kind of shooting in different directions and that's probably why you're not landing a mm -hmm. gig that you're applying for because you're kind of doing a lot of different things across this portfolio. Okay, first bit of feedback uh, is don't put your portfolio on OneDrive. Right? Or uh, Google Drive or anything like that. So I, having served as the person who reviewed portfolios for Hearthstone with Blizzard, and uh, people tend to get a little leery about being sent to a, a OneDrive, a OneDrive <laughs> because not everyone is as respectable as you are, and people put malicious stuff out there. If I see the link is to 
art station or maybe it's just to, you know, Tunda.com. Or Kara, even if you yeah. make a profile on there or Carbon Made, a place that people commonly have portfolios. That would be one less flag for them to be concerned with. I also want to let you know, Tunda, just in case you haven't tried, if you open this up on mobile, like I tried to open it up on my phone, it really doesn't work. It's very janky. I can't see the whole images. And after trying to see one or two images, trying to open them up and getting frustrated, I just closed the tab out and yeah. we came over to the computer to look. So you definitely don't want that to happen to someone, an art director or someone mm -hmm. just quickly reviewing your work to get frustrated that they can't even get it to resize because it doesn't work on mobile and then they just close it out and move on. Everyone, you want to make the process of them being able to look at your work as smooth as possible. You don't want them to have to go through any hurdles in order to do that. I want to make it easy. Yeah. Uh, additionally, by placing it here on OneDrive as a PDF, I have to see everything full size. And usually people would rather just see thumbnails and mm -hmm. click the ones that are most relevant to them. You're kind of not, not giving the AD or the recruiter the option to pick and choose. You're, yeah. They, they have to scroll through the whole thing. And they're having to load. Everything is at maximum resolution for every image. All right, so. Just think about it. Yeah, consider yeah. that. It's not ideal. So right off the top, we start with an illustration of a cover page. What this tells me immediately is, okay, this person is an illustrator looking for illustration work. And then you hit me with a character design page. So already, as a director, I'm going, all right, what's this person aiming for? Uh, now, rendering-wise, uh, both of these are pretty clean. There are uh, different styles of rendering, though. Yeah. This I'm, one is very brushy, painterly. And this one is not so much. There's like a stylized element, like kind of hard edges on the shading. Yeah. So it, this is already a different thing from the first thing. Now, uh, as far as character design goes, it is good. I like seeing the pencils first, uh, then, you know, you know, the iteration here. Let me show some different options. This one, not everything needs to be painted for character design. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of painted concepts. Every one of these is fairly well painted. Um, it's just that it's slower than usually doing lines and flats. And as a character designer, you're probably going to be focused there. Your client is probably going to have you focused more on doing volume of work rather than each piece being higher rendered. Uh, I will say that I think these are some solid characters. Yeah, you have some yeah. good skills, some good characters. Um, I like what you put out here. I think you're getting a little bit ashy in the values of some of these dark pieces by lightening them with white so it, it always gives that kind of look but maybe that's what you were going for um let's look at some more work so now uh, we have one yeah. environment i think this is the only one that's in here it's not terribly strong not quite sure why you put it in here looking at your whole portfolio when we, we look through it i don't think you're that into environments so think about again this goes for any everyone anything you put into your portfolio you should be willing to do that thing because you might yeah. get asked to do that thing and what, you should it should look competitive at that subject yeah. right now i don't feel like this one is uh there is certainly some like there was some okay i'll mention just perspective issue i feel like this is a boat but it is on the same plane as this building, and then that's a man's height is over here because that's a doorway. So that boat is 
Well, you also have the size of the door that's supposedly further away. So the the scaling isn't working by perspective. But beyond that, we're getting into the issue of, okay, I've got an illustration, I've got a character design, I've got a landscape concept, and now I've got logos, icons. Illustrated icons. So it feels like you're just trying to create a variety of things just to see what you can get some kind of response from. Um, this is normal at the beginning when yeah. you're starting out. Um, I, I don't know for sure, Tunda. It looks like maybe you've recently come out of art school or something like that. I don't know how long you've been out of school. Um, but the reason I say that, and I don't want you to take offense at all, is because this is common in yeah. what portfolios look like when people come out of school or shortly after is they do one of each thing. And so this, the fact that you have kind of one, I know you have more than one character design sheet, okay? But it's almost kind of one of each thing. It's one page of illustrated icons. It's one environment. It's, you know, one sheet of characters that's more graphic and stylized. And then Mm -hmm. two of them that are more painterly. Now we're getting into you know, more abstract things or Mm -hmm. surrealism. Um, So we got one page of that. And now we've got one page of, you know, small 2D assets, painted assets. We've got one full, heavily detailed fantasy illustration. So a recruiter or a uh, art director, when they look at a portfolio like this, it's giving them the signal that this is... uh, a student portfolio mm-hmm. because it's one of each, right? That's that's yeah. kind of like the, the classic red flag. And what they really want to see is consistency. They want to see you specialize in something and have things, some, some aspect of this is at a high level. It can be just the illustrations. It can be just the characters. But if you're kind of spreading yourself everywhere and doing one project of each thing, they don't really know what your expertise is and what you actually want to do. Yeah. Right? So, and that's up to you. If you want to do illustration, I feel like you have a lot of advancement in that direction. Uh, there's some really nice things like that. That's, the head's working, that's the face beautiful. is working. Yeah. I really like the way you've simplified the lighting on that hand. I really like that piece a lot. Uh, overall, I think this is working pretty well. We're getting some definitely some muddy values in a lot of this where... Uh, you know, we're losing a lot of the character over here. A lot of same values between this foreground tree and the background trees. Um, we're getting like this purple that is just becoming really bright and white. This is actually brighter than the light source itself, which is feeling weird. But it's kind of an interesting character. Like I, I like the layers of the character design. Some of the shapes are a little unusual, but interesting. Um, it is unclear whether she's leaning against this tree. That is something that bothers me. I don't because she's leaning back so much. The pose it, looks a little off balance. Yeah, you know, it's, it's leaning a bit back, like she would fall backwards. So I don't, I don't know if that was on purpose or or what, but. That's just something that catches us. So we don't know, like, we don't know what it is that you want to do. It looks like you put more time and effort into your illustrations, Mm -hmm. but you also seem to develop your characters. I definitely get the vibe that you do not want to do environments. The environment is there. Just take it out then. But it feels like it's just there. Um, So I would focus on either the character designs or the illustrations really put everything you have into making a portfolio just about that and showing that you're a specialist. You can do that Mm -hmm. really well. I'm also going to recommend, I I don't know if this is true, but if you do not have experience working from a brief, you need to do that. And not making up your own brief. Um, Because people sometimes in art schools, they do that where they just have the students make up their own briefs and I mean, that's like having no brief. It's the same. So it's better to actually have a brief produced by somebody else. And you fulfill it as if you were working for the client. 
So same thing we told everyone, figure out what direction you want to go, double down on that. Don't work on other things. Like if you want to do character designs, don't do environments. Don't do any environment drawings. Don't do animal anatomy. Right. Just focus on that until you're getting real traction with it. And then start expanding out a little bit. Um, I feel like this sort of approach can work. I mean, this is a usable approach for... Again, I'm going to say, at Tunda, I don't think you need a class, really. Um, I think a mentorship would be good for you or just regular check-ins with somebody. Mm -hmm. Or even, um, as, as Dan mentioned earlier, we should have plugged our community. Um, but if you already posted there, you probably already know about it, right? So going to our Discord, swatchesdiscord.com, you can get a lot of feedback from the community. Dan gives great feedback. Actually, I've seen him do it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, there are several others of our regulars in there, too, who give some solid feedback. We try to occasionally when we have the free time to do that. Um, so you can you know, get community support feedback there. Um, obviously, we... I'm not pitching this to you specifically, but to anyone who's in this situation, the same situation as you, we offer a mentorship where we do that um, very soon, very soon. I keep seeing, saying it every week, but we're working on it. We're trying to push it out. Um, we're going to have a portfolio, full portfolio kit, mm -hmm. um, and we'll explain exactly how it works. We've developed a whole system for that um, where people can, you know, who are trying to get a job, don't have a sense of direction, yeah. can really use that to make a plan for themselves. So um, look for that. Stay, you know, watch the Discord. We're going to post updates about that. But uh, you have good skills. I feel like it just needs tweaking and focus. Mm -hmm. And really, sometimes it's hard for new artists and students to really commit to a direction. They're yeah. afraid, like, oh, if I don't, if I don't shoot in every direction, I won't get anything. And it's like, no, shooting it. 20 targets is how you get nothing. Yeah. Shooting all your bullets at one target, you might actually hit something, right? So um, I think it's a better use of your time to try that strategy. Don't worry about the one job for icons maybe you would have gotten or the mm -hmm. one job for rocks and, and moss. You know, just focus. What are you passionate about? Is it the characters? Okay, just do the characters. Show us what you can do. Dazzle the client. Um, make the best looking characters that you can make, like knock it out of yeah. the park. Yeah. Uh, I personally think that the old crone character is some of the strongest stuff you have in here. I really like some of the combinations of the textures and the shapes and stuff that you're using on that. It feels more original, more interesting. So if you wanted to go in that way, you can, but if you do prefer the more colorful, harder edge stuff, Different clientele, but that probably would also be acceptable in, in the right places. So. All right. Well, I think we need to wrap it up there. I try to keep an eye on the chat. I didn't really see questions submitted. Yeah. Lawrence says he's been working there for over a month. Very nice. Very good. Congrats. Yeah. Lawrence took... I don't know. Was it one class with us, one or two? I don't remember. But then he, uh, he then he went to the diploma program and he, and he got his diploma there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good work, Lawrence. You really, uh, you worked hard. So you deserve it. Now don't forget, uh, we do have more reviews coming up. I think we have enough pieces to have another review next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we don't have six more after that. We only have like two more after that. Yeah. So if you've so, not submitted your work. Yeah, if you post now, you can, you, you won't get into the next video next week, but you'll get into the one after that. So just be aware. Oh, there's a question for you. Uh, I know concept artists don't have too much time to spend on one image in comparison to illustrators. How much rendering would you recommend a concept artist to apply on their design pieces? Okay, Jose. Not every artist does high rendering on pieces. A concept. Um, we've talked about him before. Is like Brian Rat Matthias. He doesn't do realistic rendering on any of his pieces. And we're talking about doing, like, working on the Mandalorian series and Marvel movies and mm -hmm. Avengers and stuff. So 
It's whatever serves the image. Well, pull up Brian Mattis. You want, yeah. He's asking for an example. We showed this, I think, last week. I think we showed some of Brian's work, but we'll show it again so people know what... There you go. So, okay, one thing to keep in mind is if you do have really good rendering skills and you can paint very realistically, then after you finish all of your concepts and you're to your final concept... Yeah, you can do a fully painted version. You can fully realize that. Well, it, it's it's like, especially when you're making a portfolio piece, you're not under any time constraint. You yeah. got all the time in the world. So the goal should be to make showcase your skills, show the best work that you can make. If your rendering is not fantastic, don't do it at all, right? You're trying to impress the client, mm -hmm. right? So if, the, if your rendering is not good, stick to lines and flats don't try to render it if it'll bring down the quality so you want to show the best version of your concept that you can show ultimately it is all about serving and conveying that concept if the rendering gets in the way of that because you're adding lighting and effects and textures and stuff then that's not serving it and you just need to keep it at a simpler state visually yeah the rendering is very, very simple on these. So even as more recent ones, like, they're not that detailed. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So he spots the blacks, spots the shadows in black, throws in a little texture, looks like he has a little photo bashing of just some wrinkles there. Works around that. Photo bash some boots in there because who wants to paint shiny boots? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, but he has some that are even flatter than this. Yeah. Like this one actually has, you know, some some photo texture. Sometimes he doesn't even do that. Um, so you don't need the rendering, mm -hmm. right? But if you're good at rendering, if you can render really well, beautifully, then yeah, do that for your show pieces, for your portfolio piece, because you're trying to show off, right? That's, but yeah, it depends on how good your rendering is. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff yeah, this is quite flat, but I know exactly what that costume needs to look like. I know where everything is. I know where all the seams are. I know what goes where. He's not making an illustration. Yeah. He's just, it's just a nice presentation. He's presenting it clearly. Um, yeah, I mean, he's really skilled at this, at like not overdoing it just enough. You know, the most common things we see is more junior concept artists trying to paint all the versions, which that's not even good practice because that's not what you're going to do on the job anyway. Or their paint isn't rendering it to a high enough level and it, it'd be better to keep it lower so just focus on like design, clean lines, good color palettes, just the design work. Are you adapting the IP look well? So Z does yeah. uh, environment concept art. Like I wouldn't even render it. He says, I'm struggling between finishing it without rendering or rendering it entirely. So it depends on how good your render is. Yeah. Because... A lot of people doing environment concept art are doing it in 3D and like 90% of it is 3D. You, mm -hmm. can, you can't really compete with that by, with manual painting, okay? So you're either gonna do 3D too to compete, make yourself competitive, or just stick to the lines and, and flats. Don't even go there. Um, I mean, it depends. Like you wanna spend 40 hours rendering an environment to compete with a guy who did it all in 3D? Yeah. It's up to you. I don't I don't know if that's a great use of your time. So just take all this into account. Uh, whatever gets you to match the industry, what is acceptable in the industry. Or which company you're trying to work yeah. for. Yeah, look at what their artists are doing because that's what they're going to expect from you. They're not going to take a step down from what they already well, have. Well, it's the same thing with the characters. It's like certain studios, they're happy to get the lines and flats. Other studios, man, you better photo bash it and it better look pretty real. But it's just which project you're working on. They have different pipelines. Yeah. 
All right, you guys are probably bored of us. Do we have any more questions? Just real quick before we shut down. Uh, yeah, we'll give a second. If somebody has a question, we'll, we'll take it. Otherwise, we're we don't I saw Sam in the chat. Hi, Sam. I don't know <laughs> if you're still watching. Um, yeah, Christina, Brandy, Marion, hello. Really appreciate you guys showing up. We'll try to do this weekly. Um, in two weeks, we might not do it because we have family visiting, but we'll try to do it. Uh, weekly. Yep. So they have a, a five minute lag, so they won't. Plus, they got to type. So just let us know if there's any other comments or questions. If not, yeah. we will wrap up. Otherwise, I'll take a look at. Uh... Oh, I also want to mention a special shout out to Alex for. Signing up for fantasy illustration class again for the second time. We appreciate oh. you. It's well, thank you, Alex. Yes, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but Alex is the fourth person that has signed up for that class twice. So, no, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I love. I used to be so jealous of Zach Cohen <laughs> over at Sin Studio when his students would sign up for his class like two or three times for the same class, and I was like, what? Wait, why? I mean, that's. Oh, we're. Yeah, glad, that's, it's yeah. really like it, it. just makes us feel good. Like we're really providing value so much so that people want to come back. So uh, thank the, you. The thing with Alex too is, he took it not long ago, but we definitely put some updates into it mm -hmm. for the current version that got recorded. So there'll be some new stuff in there for, for him. Mm -hmm. Uh. Not a question, just throwing it out there. I wish there was more content or advice for concept artists who don't like to render. Hmm. It's hard to find. Well, you probably have a point there. Oh, you know, I wish I remembered the name of that artist, that New Edge graduate. You know that girl who did the the witches, I think it was witches, student witches project. And I don't, oh. I think some of that was not rendered, but I can't quite. I know who you're talking about. I have no idea. I don't remember the name. Uh, um, there are some uh, FCD graduates and some New Edge graduates, so go on ArtStation and look for those people, search for those schools, and they come out, some of them, with very elaborate environment work that is not rendered. You mm -hmm. have to look for it. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just beautiful lines, clean flats, beautiful design. Um, and that's what it's about. So it's not like everybody needs to render, right? Um, yeah. Somebody like um, Paulo Galamgam, I know oh. he knows how to produce nice lines. Go look for him on, on our station. And uh, Charles Lynn is really good at that. We mention Charles yeah. like all the time. But yeah, Charles is a solid choice. Really Still clean. look at his stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brandy says, do you guys think it's better for a concept artist to focus on many quick character concepts or one really complete big concept project? Well, do you want to answer that or should I? No, go ahead. And... I know that uh, a lot of companies want to see projects. Like they want to see, so if you're doing characters, they want to see one finished character. Like, pull up, um, oh, I don't remember that guy's name. Tiprian. Interesting name. Um, this piece caught my eye a while back. This is his painted final. Mm -hmm. This, he did this to impress. Okay, this looks fantastic. Beautifully done. People like to see this. Companies like to see this. Um, let's see the full project, though this so keep going there's pages and pages where everything is beautifully clean yeah. i feel like the answer is both yeah they so want they don't want to see quick things they want to see nice complete things yeah so the whole process is here they want to see your process and he's got all these exploration drawings to arrive at that beautiful final right this is great stuff it's not just about that rendered final. They want mm -hmm. to see this too. What we don't want to see and what our ADs recruiters don't want to see is like quick, messy sketches, speed paints. That's not, no. that's not valuable. 
It's seeing those design drawings, the exploration drawings, and also dazzle them with a showpiece. So I, I think it's, uh, it used to be in the Adam Hawk portfolio guide. I think Feng Zhu has mentioned this. Usually what they want to see is for every concept like this guy, right? And it could be this guy, it could be an environment, it could be a character. They want to see like five pieces, five pages of the process and not just here's 15 color variations of that costume, yeah. not that. They're all different, right? There's color variations, design, pattern, texture variations, explorations, poses, expressions, accessories, the animals, the mounts, the objects, everything. The inspiration behind it, yeah. you know? This, this is what they want to see. So just having a ton of quick drawings is... Yeah, I mean, these are rough, but they're still clear. There is still a precise thought precise concept um little rough things like this is as rough of these as he gets and they're not messy though yeah they're just not super developed but they're not messy or sloppy so that would be the way this to is do really it. really impressive yeah. and to be honest i brought this up and i brought brought up new age these people are the people you're competing with yeah you're competing with this portfolio so you need to ask yourself, I'm going into character concept design. Can I compete? Oh, yeah, that was another one. Can I compete random. with this guy? Because if you're up against a guy like this, you know, that's that's what the competition looks like. It's beautifully done. Look at that beautiful side view, the the accessories, the weapons. Like, no, oh, he did not. He was not lazy and he didn't skimp on doing the work, right? Yeah. I'm um, split between doing fast one-offs and really dedicating myself to a multi-month concept. Now, if projects are also good, it's like this character and the other character, I think, are in the same yeah, they world, right? Skull sworn. Uh, so that's nice because it actually shows a potential client that you know how to have a consistent theme and carry out a consistent uh, kind of IP look. And, you know, that can be something you made up or it can be like, oh, I'm just going to do a fantasy version of, you know, some well-known story. And that's fine, too. I'm just looking for that one artist who did, she did, this, did the most marvelous project. This is what I'm talking about of just flats and colors. Mm -hmm. This page has no rendering beautiful page nobody would say this is unprofessional yeah same thing here all the little items that are in this room right there we go and then yeah we have this you know fully painted 3d we, image. we just want to interject here what you see on this project this is world building mm -hmm. world building isn't alien terrain making up this weird thing completely out of my head world building is the art director sets the world and you build all the things that fill that world you populate it yeah right? so all these things need to be designed and you know what i love about this was that where does she say okay her the story right the narrative it's i love this it has a very simple story. Two aspiring witches are late to school and they're heading to academy as fast as they can. That's it. That's the story. It's not some convoluted, epic yeah. sci-fi space opera where, I, you know, I've, we've had students pitch us ideas where we're oh, like, man. no idea what's going on. This is way too big of a story. You don't need a big story. It's two witches late for school. That's it. This is where they live. They're getting ready to go to school. Adorable. Here is their stuff. Yeah, here's their stuff. Here's their room. Here's their little cottage. They're going you to know. have breakfast and head out. Yeah, there's, you know, all the items. And if you keep going, there's the witches. There they are. You know, the costume design front and back. Clean. It, it go to the next one. I don't know if it's this arrow or the other one, but... She made a really good impression here. Look at this. Then she went a step further. It's like, okay, here's the magic school too for you. You know, okay, it's basically Hogwarts, whatever. 
look at the modules, right? Mm -hmm. Beautifully laid out. The design details. I know exactly the inspiration behind this clock. Wonderfully implemented. Like this, this is world building. This is design. This is a concept art project. So we want to show you guys this to see what some of these graduates are doing. And this is your competition for those jobs, right? This person, I'm telling you, this person is going to be like a senior very fast. This person's mm -hmm. going to be an art director. Um, and it, you can see why, right? They're yeah. not skimping. They're not cutting corners. And it doesn't need to be a super complex story. Yep. Uh, Igor says, I just dropped here now watching from the beginning of the stream. Just want to say a huge thank you for reviewing my portfolio. Igor, Thanks you're for welcome. sharing your artwork. Yeah. Uh, Renato says, just went back and watched my part. Thank you very much for the feedback. I'm definitely going to study and focus more on the faces and other mentioned points. Hey, glad you found it helpful. Oh, great and work. Great, great dragons. Appreciate anyone who's willing to put their art up in public to have <laughs> reviews on it. And hopefully... It takes uh, courage, you know. You know, it was a good experience. Okay, we got other stuff that we need to get to. So we appreciate you hanging out with us. And we should catch you next week. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. All uh, right. We'll see you on the Discord. See you, everybody.